Hello everyone, today we're going to be creating a neat little mock-up for a feature where your stuff can have like a time deletion. Now in typical Snapchat fashion, uh, we're just going to be marking these records as deleted, which will make them no longer visible, but of course they still exist in our database, so we have all that sweet delicious user data. For doing this, we're just going to be using posts. Uh, originally I thought about doing like messaging for this, but I feel like that's too much overhead. So instead, we're just going to have this form here where we can select how long we want this to live for. I went with really short times here for the sake of a demo. I'm going to go ahead and click five seconds, click create post, go back to the home page real quick. And one of these is scheduled for five minutes, but the one that's scheduled for five seconds should disappear right there. So you can see it performs a background job, marks it as deleted. After it marks it as deleted, it then uses Turbo to broadcast a remove. Uh, and that remove is what causes it to disappear from this page because in our console here, we can look, we have this uh, Turbo Streams channel right here. So it's broadcasting to this uh, channel that's on the page. And then this channel says, all right, I'll remove it for you. So, uh, and there you can see the five minutes must have just expired. So we're now down to zero posts here again. So if this is a feature you've ever wanted to implement, it's actually really easy to do so. A lot of the overhead just comes from, I guess, like structuring things properly, but even there, this is pretty simple. So we're gonna do a Rails new video and then we'll go ahead and we'll CD into it. And then we'll go ahead and run a code dot. I'll move over the uh, tab I have here because you don't need to see what I'm working on. Uh, but yeah, so basic idea for this is we're gonna generate a, a post model, we're going to generate a job, we're going to generate uh, basically the the model with a additional migration so we don't have to modify the forms. So what I mean by that is we're going to start with a Rails G scaffold for the post, we're just going to give it a title and a body of type text. And then after we do that, we'll then do a Rails G migration uh, for adding the expiration to our post. So we want to give it an expires at which is going to be of type date time and then a deleted of type boolean. We mark it as deleted uh, and we have to set the default for this to false. So let's come in here to our DB, our migrate and the uh, oldest or the newest migration here. And then for this deleted, we'll just set this to have a default of false, just like that. Now we can go ahead and run a rails DB colon migrate command. So that takes care of that setup portion. Let's go ahead and let's run a rails S and then we can come over here into our uh, config and our routes.rb. Let's set the root to be the post controller index action. And then let's come over to localhost port 3000. And then I'll hit control shift R just to make sure that we don't have anything uh, running in the background. Okay, so now the bulk of our work is in front of us. So what do we actually have to do? Well, the first thing is we want to come into our index. So we'll come into app, views, posts, and our index page. On our index, we want to stream from some channel that we'll be broadcasting these deletions to. I'm going to name it the post channel. It might be a bit confusing because we also have the post div, uh, but just be aware that this is the actual channel here. Then we're going to come into our loop and I'm going to get rid of this uh, link to because we kind of need everything to be in a partial. So you'll have to refactor your logic a little bit. Uh, you can either put a div with an ID out here for your posts. You could have like a div or uh, let's do like a, uh, I don't know, a content tag for something that is like of type div, nothing inside of it. And then you could have like your, I don't know, your ID, which is your DOM ID for the post. Again, this is really contrived, but uh, most things I usually do are. You can come down here, hit end, and then you would have to target this DOM ID for this post. But you have to remember that your post partial already has a DOM ID inside of it. So I'm going to be targeting this in the partial for removal. If you want to remove including the show link, you would then have to move it up here some, somehow and make sure these are unique. Uh, but in this case, I think this is fine. So we'll just leave it like this. We'll get rid of our show link. And for our render here, what we want to do is we just want to say render the post unless post dot deleted. Oops, dot deleted. So that'll make sure it only shows up unless it's uh, unless it's been deleted. So we can do this. This will be visible for the rest of time now. So we can come in here and we can say, all right, we have this. Well, what do we need to do now? Well, now we want to uh, close these and come into our post form. So for our post form, we can do this uh, either now or later. I'm going to just do it now because it'll make it a bit easier. We're going to add in that little drop down for the expiration. So we'll come in here and we'll say this needs to have another div. It's going to have a uh, expires in for the label here. And then for the actual expires in, what we're going to do is we're going to say this is a form uh, select. It's going to be for expires in, and then this needs to be an array. 
So I'll move this down onto the next line. This is where you enter your options. So five seconds is gonna have a value of five. 30 seconds will have a value of 30. One minute will have a value of 60. So two minutes, of course, would then have, you guessed it, a value of uh, two minutes, and you would then say 120. So this is because I'm setting it to expire in the number of expires in we've selected dot seconds. So that's why these are all in, in seconds here. You could of course change this if you want to, to be minutes or hours or something. After that, we just need to come in here and say, this also needs to have a prompt, which says select duration. At this point, you are done with your form. So we can come over here, we can hit new post, and you can see we have the selection here for these various values. So we'll back out, we'll just sit here. So that's it for this form. Now for the complicated part-ish. We need to have this job that we want to run. So let's go ahead and let's do that. Let's stop our server and do a Rails G job. And this is gonna be mark as deleted. We can then go ahead and run a Rails S again. For the initial job here, what I wanna do is I want to, uh, we'll move this logic later, but I wanna start off by just putting it inside of this job. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste this in. It's gonna look something like this. We use the action view record identifier. This is for uh, used for DOM ID, which gives us access to that DOM ID helper here. So we can just pass in the post. Uh, we then say for the perform, pass in a post ID, do the post update and for the update, set the deleted to true, then do a turbo streams broadcast. Of course, we don't have access to just the broadcast remove to in here. So we have to use the fully qualified name. We broadcast to remove to the posts, which of course we're listening to in our views posts index page right here. We're listening to our stream from. Uh, and then we target the DOM ID of the post, which is in our post partial, this DOM ID right here. The ID for this div is what the target is targeting. It just has to match it. So that's it for our job. This will run in the background, but how do we actually fire this? Well, the first way we can fire it is from our post controller. In our post controller, we want to come down to the bottom and we want to permit that expires in thing. We're not gonna use this yet, but we're gonna permit it already. Then up here in our create, what we want to do is we want to, uh, well, let's just say something like this, right? We have a at post dot expires at, we can set it equal to the time dot current plus like five seconds, for example. Once we have that, we then come down here and we say this needs to mark as deleted job. We then call dot set, we say, or dot set, we then say wait until at post dot expires at, and then we do a dot perform later for the at post dot ID. If we do this and we've set this up correctly, we could then come over here and do a new post. We'll say hello. We'll set five seconds and world. Although setting this, I don't think matters here. We can click create post and we can see here we're running into an issue with an unknown attribute for expires in for our post. I just realized why we're running into that. Uh, we're going to keep the expires in off of here yet because we haven't actually defined the expires in. So for now, we'll just leave it and we'll make this an unpermitted parameter. Uh, we'll come in here, we'll do another hello world real quick. Uh, hello world. We'll click create post. We can come back to the homepage and we can see the hello world right here. Now this should by default be set to expire in five seconds. We can see that's been deleted. So that's working. Now, of course, if we come in here and we do a rail C and we do a post last, we can see hello world is right here. It's not appearing because it's set to deleted, but we haven't actually said post.last.destroy. So if you were to call post.last.destroy, instead of updating it to be deleted, so you were to say post.destroy, it would then actually get destroyed. So that's the only change you have to make there, uh, just making sure you're aware of that. But okay, final step now, how do we add in that dropdown support? Because this is great, but how do we expand this? Well, the dropdown support's gonna be pretty easy, but we're gonna move our logic here out of this uh, job. Instead, we're gonna come over to our models and in our concerns, we're gonna right click new file, call this deletable.rb. And then in our deletable, we're gonna do quite a few things. We're gonna start with a module of deletable, of course, because that's what we're calling this. We're going to extend active support concern because this is a concern. We then do an included do for an attribute accessor for expires in. And you guessed that this expires in right here, this attribute accessor is what also allows us to come in here and do the expires in in here. The expires in is different from our expires at. So that is something where you'd have to come in here and make sure that your expires at is set to your expires in, right? Something like time.current plus uh, at post.expires in dot two i dot seconds or something. Uh, but if we come over to our deletable, 
we also have our after create schedule deletion. So we're gonna take this and in our post.rb, we're going to include this concern. This allows us to do this in multiple places, assuming they have the same migrations. Uh, we can then come in here and we can say after a post has been created, after create, we'll schedule deletion. Schedule deletion right here says return unless expires in dot present. This is also where we could set our expires at. So instead of doing it in our post controller here, we could just do this in our deletable, right? So now our post controller is looking a little bit leaner. We can take this job here and we can get rid of this scheduling. We can get rid of this comment here and we've effectively gone back to where we were initially, which is just your, your post and your controller, your post is created, nothing else happens here, but this, this background job happens through this concern after create. So we return, we set the expires at, we update our columns expires at, and then we mark as deleted job dot set the wait until expires at perform later. So this is still calling our job, which is why we didn't delete this, but this is happening from our concern as opposed to in our controller. So it helps us clean up our controller a bit. Our model looks super lean and our concern here is handling this where we could then have something else like a to-do list where this gets expired. So let's come over here and assuming I set this up right, we can create a new one. We'll say hello again. We'll set the duration to be uh, five se Well, let's do 30 seconds and we'll say 30 seconds. Uh, we'll just do that for both of these. We'll come back and we'll hit back again. So this is our 30 second one. Let's come in here, do another one. We'll say five seconds. We'll change this to be five seconds and we'll just put test in the body, come back here and we'll watch this. So we expect the five second one to disappear right there. And now we expect the 30 second one to disappear in like maybe 15 seconds. And during this time, this is where you could of course, uh, you know, clean up your code or whatever and do your git commits. Uh, but at this point we are pretty much done with the tutorial. So you've got this running, you have this configurable. Uh, you could of course set this up so the users maybe set this once and then forget it. Uh, and then instead of passing it in as a parameter here, you would just grab this from like your current users uh, parameter or something and pass it in somehow, right? Uh, so that's ultimately up to you. Uh, maybe you have your expires at in here and you set it in, in like your controller or something. So you say like uh, at post dot expires in is equal to current underscore user dot uh, preferred underscore expiration underscore time or something just to pass it back there just to give you an idea. But that's gonna do it for this video. That's pretty much all I wanted to cover. Hopefully you find something about this useful. Maybe not the premise of this because it is a little bit contrived, but you know, people might be interested in this. Uh, but hopefully you got something out of this and hopefully I will see you in the next video.